Hello, welcome to my channel. If you don't already know me, my name is Shauna. I've been a nail artist in New York City for about 11 years now. And I made this channel to share my nail secrets with you guys. Today I'm going to do an unboxing of my um, new practice hand. And I'm also going to do a tutorial for Valentine's Day nails. Um, it's step by step. I walk you guys all the way through it. Timestamps and links to anything that you see in the video will be in the description below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends, especially your new nail tech friends. And leave a comment for any question you guys may have. Um, there's also going to be a link to my Discord down below for any new beginners that need a judgment-free space to ask whatever questions that you might need. Um, well, that's all. I hope you enjoy the video. Please let me know how you like it in the comments. Bye! So first we're going to open up the package. It didn't come with the glitters on the right, but uh, the first thing that you get is these brown and white replaceable tips. Um, they come in sizes for your thumb and then sizes for the other four fingers. Uh, they also come with these replacement fingertips uh, in case you damage your actual fingertips on the hand with your file. I ordered this one from Amazon and I ordered this specific one because the description said that it would come with replacement fingertips. I didn't see that on the other um, available hands so I'll leave the link in the description. But these are just the components it comes with and we can put it together. Like I said, it comes with uh, different colored replacement tips. Um, you get one size for the thumb and then the other sizes for the other four fingers are generally the same And it comes with a table clasp kind of like the same thing that I use for my tripod um, But the fingers bend and the hand is very flexible, but it's still really heavy and it'll stay in place once you put it on your desk So these white tips are the one that came with the hand in the box and it's pretty easy to take out and as well snap them back in. It's just a really easy in and out motion. Um, but I also find out later what to do when your fingertips won't stay in as sturdy as when you first got them. Okay, so today we're going to do a transparent-ish kind of tip with a pink ombre for Valentine's Day, you know, something to start off this season. And we're going to cut off the tips of the nails and this is meant to uh, replicate your client's actual nail. So I'm going to use my 100 um, grit file and I'm going to bring down the sides just so that it's a rounded edge and when I glue on my tips I won't have any problems. Now that you've rounded off the edges, you can start measuring out the tips, but today I only had the larger size tips with me right now. So I had to cut them down to size just to match the width of the nail, and then I still have to cut them down a little more because I want to make sure I get this size as close as possible so I don't have to do as much filing later. But then after I get the right size, I use my KDS glue right around the edge of the well. And I just apply the nail and hold it for a little bit and then I can measure out the other fingers. So now we can start filing and shaping our tips. I'm going to use my 100 grit file 
and since these are pretty long they're kind of already squarish coffin so i don't have to do too much filing the only thing with filing is to make sure you keep your file extremely straight or else they're going to get kind of like a rounded more ballerina look if you're going for a coffin and when you're filing you kind of have to put a little pressure into it just to get the right shape sometimes so take note of how i'm holding the nail okay not that part <laughs> it kind of popped off but just take note of how I'm holding the nail and I'm able to also get my file in that straight line like you need it to be. After I file the sides, I'm also going to clip the tip, but note how I put my ring finger behind it and my thumb on top of it. And I'm holding those two parts so that the nail can withstand the pressure that I'm putting on the file to make it straight. So once you've shaped all your nails and you dust off the, your client's hands, you can take your drill and I'm using my 180 grit um, sanding band and I'm just going to file the part where the nail tip meets the actual nail bed. Um, I've noticed that when you don't file that part, the acrylic, if it's too transparent, it'll show through. So just make sure you file where the nail tip meets the nail uh, bed and so that you can get it nice and flush. So after I do my filing and I dust off my client's nails, I like to clean off my desk from all the dust. I'll just empty it into the trash next to me and then dust off the table. Because uh, I don't like when it's all dusty and dirty when I'm about to use my liquid monomer and the acrylic. So these are the sparkles I'm using today. I think I'm going to use that color. Uh, with the acrylic I have is Mia Secret. I'll link everything in the description. Unless I custom mix that color and I forgot. So I'll let you guys know. <laughs> So I'm going to pour out my monomer. I use Mia Secret's um, non-yellowing EMA formula. And if you're a new beginner nail tech, you need to know about the difference between EMA monomer, which is legal, and MMA monomer, which is illegal and very harmful to your clients. And if you don't know about this, I have a highlight on my Instagram explaining any and everything you need to know about MMA monomer. So I thought it was going to be as satisfying putting a dehydrator on these nails, but it's not as satisfying as real nail beds. <laughs> but we're gonna do a transparent kind of tip. Um, I wanted the little hearts to be basically the star of the show, but it needed kind of like a background. So we're gonna do a thin layer of glitter. And in these first two nails, I kind of put too much on the first finger. So I just had to work quickly and I transferred it to the second finger. But on the last two, you can see exactly how I did it. But for now, I just dip my clear acrylic into the glitter and I kind of have to mix it on the nail. But I'm feathering it upward so that way I'll have a nice ombre transition when I'm ready to do the pink color in the cuticle. But I'm just filling in any spaces that I think needs a little more glitter. And remember, we're doing this transparent, so I'm not going to pack the glitter on a lot at all. So again, I pick up a pretty wet bead. Um, it doesn't have to be huge and just enough to cover the nail and i'm just going to spread it out to the consistency i like and make sure that i feather it upwards so that i can ensure that ombre is going to be nice <laughs> My favorite parts um we could see use these cute little uh sparkly hearts that i just got and they actually came in a pack of four so i'll leave those in the description for you guys on amazon but since the acrylic is already pretty wet i'm just trying to position them how i want them now since there's nothing really holding them in there um i don't want them to fall off mid-appointment and then I'll have to spend time putting them back on again. So I'm just going to do a very thin layer of acrylic. 
but it's a little bit it was a little too wet and it was dragging down my sequins so you really just want the acrylic to um touch the sequins because when it hardens in a couple seconds it's just gonna hold it in place and i'm just using a clear so there i just added a tiny little bead of acrylic and just spread it around a little bit just so that the sequins would have a little something to adhere to and i'm just going to add them and spread them out a little bit um, because i just do want to focus on the ones on top i want to make sure that there is enough on the top of the acrylic so um, on top of the nail so that when i do the ombre you can still see the sequins starting to fade out underneath the nail So after we laid our sequins and we basically did the tip of our nail, I'm going to use Mia Secrets, um, I believe this is cover, uh, cover Pink. I'm going to use Cover Pink and I'm going to start with my ombre process. So on the first two nails, I do a few beads and on the last nail, I show you how I do it with basically one bead. So I'm going to get my bead first. I just want to lay this color down and this way I'm really focusing on the ombre part so I lay the color down make sure my brush is wet enough and I can start pulling down the color to make sure it fades over the sequins so I still don't like how transparent it is so I'm gonna get another bead and try to layer it down there again I'm just letting it like flow down a little bit and just hold the nail downwards and gravity will do the work for you i had to just take out a little piece of something that was in there um but sometimes the pigment in the acrylic is really prominent and you have to pick them out but i'm just trying to fade that color over the sequin I, the goal for me is to make sure that it's fading down nicely onto the sequin but since we're using a white background i still want to make sure that it's opaque enough so that you won't see through onto the white um, rounded edge. But don't forget to also make sure you check the sides so that it's not tripping down the sides. But I feel like one more tiny little bead in the middle right here would do best to serve my purpose. And it's gonna cover the sequins very nicely as well as give the same solid color that I want there. Here I do the same thing. On the next nail, we do a one ball method. But I'm just going to add the acrylic as I see fit to the point where the sequins are covered and it's nicely faded and so that it's opaque enough so that we don't see the white free edge.
So for this nail, we're gonna practice using a kind of like a one ball method and I wanna get a big amount of acrylic on my brush. So I'm gonna hold it in the powder for a little bit longer than usual. And I needed to bring it up a little bit just to make that cuticle uh, perfect. And also make sure you're checking your sidewall so it's not dripping over the sides. Bring it down a little bit and fade it out really nicely onto the sequins. Ombre was honestly a journey for me and it took me a while to learn how to do it as best as I could and I'm still learning how to do it good now to be honest with different acrylics and with different formulas each company you'll have a different experience with so this is Mia Secret and I'm used to using Mia Secret products but it did take me a lot of practice to even get this right So I just added a little more where I think I needed at the cuticle just to get that like perfect cuticle there. And unfortunately my camera stopped recording at this finger so I didn't get to record the last finger but I basically did the same one ball method. And now since everything is nice and laid you want to encapsulate all the nails um, just to get a smooth top. And on my clients, this is usually when I do my apex, and the apex prevents uh, their nails from breaking. So, but since this is just a practice hand, I'm just going to do one thin layer of clear acrylic just to balance out uh, from where I ombre and the sequins in the bottom, which are a significantly thinner layer. So I'm just going to put clear where I see fit just to um, even out the entire surface of the nail. And you'll see when we start filing that even though I'm putting in an entire layer of clear, you still get a little bit of bumps here and there. So I just take one big bead of clear acrylic and I like to start at the top, kind of like by the cuticle. And I just work it down, making sure to, to uh, hold the client's finger downward so that the acrylic can flow down. So all you're really doing is checking for the sidewalls and just making sure it all comes down equally. On this nail, I felt like I needed to start at the tip first and feather it backwards just so I can equal out the size of the tip and the size of the pink part by the cuticle where we ombre it already. So it's kind of like I'm filling in a space. So I'll drop my bead at the edge and I'll practice um, pulling it backwards so that it can level out. Okay, perfect, everything is laid, sequins, ombre, and cap, perfect. So now we can start with our 100 grit file and start on the left side as well as the right. And I like to catch a little bit underneath. Um, this is just me shaping up the nails um, before I come over the top with the buffer. But the nail tips that we did earlier, are we already sized them and shaped them as much as I felt needed to be shaped. So I don't really have to do much right now. I'm just gonna refine that shape. So if my, this was my client, I would hold her finger really sturdy while I use my file to even out the shape, however I feel I need to do it. And when I do the tips of the nails, um, make sure to take note of how I hold the actual fingernail. It's just so that the pressure doesn't affect your client per se, but you're holding her fingernail nice and sturdy. So again with my 180 gray, I'm just going to start going over the top of the nail. You can see right there, that's where it's a little shallow compared to the rest of the nail. And this is where my, um, this finger and the pinky started to come off a little bit. But if you can see by my thumb, it's because the nail is kind of slipping out. But you'll see eventually, I figure it out. But for now, I'm just going to go over the top and smooth out the nail so that when I put the top coat, it's a nice even coat. 
because once you start taking those pictures and the ring light circle hits that hits that nail you're going to start seeing how lumpy it is if you don't get this part correct Make sure not to forget when you're done filing over the top to hit underneath with the round barrel and sometimes if my client's hands are a little smaller i'll have to switch my drill bit but i always make sure to do this so they have a little sharper secret okay so my beef with this practice hand is that it kept coming out eventually as i was working and the nail tip wasn't staying in sturdy at all so i was like did i just like wear this tip out or something but no, I just had to push it in all the way because I guess when you're working, you pull it out a little bit. But once I pushed it all the way in, it stayed pretty sturdy and it was not coming off. I didn't have to worry about anything. And now for the top cone, you know, you know, this is my favorite part. You know, this is my favorite part. It's that encapsulation reveal. But I'm going to use uh, Valentino Beauty Pure's um, top coat. This is the best top coat I've ever used. In the two years that I've been doing nails, um, this is the one that I'm stuck on. And it works perfect for everything. Not just regular top coat, but when you have to use those chrome powders too, it's pretty great for that as well. Now that top coat reflection is going to show exactly where your acrylic is lumpy or bumpy. Or it's also going to show where your top coat hasn't leveled out yet. And it'll show the little bubbles that you need to fill in. So make sure you just take a second to pay attention to that before you put your client's hand in the uh, lamp. But I cured mine for about 30 seconds and this is the final look. If you made it this far, you a real one. But make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel if you like this video and want to see more. Leave a comment on what you want to see next. Thanks guys, bye!